Well, thank you very much for joining us in this third session. This will be the second session with Dr. Bill Anderson. I've already introduced him once, so I'll be brief. But uh, we are very honored that Dr. Anderson has come and agreed to share his scholarship with us today. We have uh, just a, we've heard a tremendous presentation earlier this morning uh, that shows uh, Dr. Anderson, professor, we should call you Professor Anderson, uh, for the way you, you love to teach Lincoln, and we gain so many insights. And this particular uh, talk is going to uh, be on the literature of Lincoln. There is a vast amount, I think Lincoln has been written about more than any other American, and uh, perhaps more than just about anybody else in world literature, world history, and so we will learn more about that. Dr. Bill Anderson. Thank you, Gleaves. Hi. It's a, a privilege to be here, and this is a subject that I uh, dearly love. I am a very serious uh, book collector. Um, I've told my wife that on the last day that I'm alive, I want her to put the book that I'm reading right on my chest so I've got something to read on my way up. Pretty presumptuous of me, isn't it? <laughs> I said in my earlier presentation that in 1945, the scholar J. Monahan did a Lincoln uh, bibliography, and he cataloged 3,598 books. That seemed like a lot, but what has happened in the interim has literally been an explosion. Today, we believe, somebody has counted, that there are 16,000 books and articles about the President of the United States. And so what I'm going to try to do, this is going to sound a little bit more like a classroom, uh, I'm going to try and help you, if you don't already know a lot more than I do, uh, about this literature. And people frequently ask me, what should I read? Uh, which biography should I read? What, what should I believe about Mary Todd Lincoln? Uh, what should I believe about Lincoln's position on slavery? What's fact and what's fiction? And so that's kind of the purpose of, of my uh, presentation. And understand at the outset that I've read only a fraction of that mammoth uh, collection of 16,000 books and articles. But I've read quite a bit, and I have a pretty strong library. Is there anything left to be written about? about Abraham Lincoln. In 1984, Herbert Mitgang, who himself is a Lincoln scholar, composed an article for the New York Times entitled, After 175 Years, They Still Pursue Lincoln. And his reference was to an article that was written 50 years before by James G. Randall. And I'll mention James Garfield Randall a number of times. He was a very distinguished professor at the University of Illinois at Champaign, and I'll mention also later that most of us judge that his four volumes uh, represent the best multi-volume biography, or, or at least four-volume biography, of Abraham Lincoln. Because Randall had entitled his article, Has the Lincoln Theme Been Exhausted? Well, his first volume came out in 1945, so if Randall were standing here, he'd have a grin as wide as his face saying, I guess not, because there have been thousands of books on Lincoln since that. Well, Mitgang, in this article that's my core reference, answers his own rhetorical question in quoting Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln said, we cannot escape history. We will be remembered in spite of ourselves. To vividly illustrate the depth of this interest and in research and writing and examination of Lincoln, I refer to an article that James I. Robertson wrote. Uh, he's the guy who uh, retired and he's Professor Emeritus at Virginia uh, Tech uh, at Blackburn, Virginia. He's the great Civil War historian. You may know him. He has written the best biography of Stonewall Jackson and the, and the Stonewall Brigade and, and, and so forth. But he, he, wrote, uh, <clears throat> he wrote an article for Civil War Times, and he told a wonderful story about an amateur historian who was telling other people that he was going to write a new book on Lincoln, and his focus was what Lincoln did on Sunday. And the person he was talking to said, gosh, 
isn't that a little bit narrow and restricted? And the amateur historian said, well, it's sure not, that was one-seventh of his life. Well, that sounds far-fetched, but let me lead by that to say that there was a team of 35 historians that really sought to compile what happened in every day of Lincoln's life. And in 1960, during the Lincoln Sesquicentennial Commission, they, these two, or two or three, three volumes came out, and it's called Lincoln Day by Day. It's one of the classic works, and they were able to record what Lincoln was doing on 19,700 of the days of his life. That's not every day, but the great majority. So they looked for what was the most significant thing that was happening on every one of those days. I don't own that, but I'm going to own it. Uh, I just went on, uh, went on ABE Books, and a real good quality is about $250. I'm going to wait till the excitement over Lincoln dies down a little bit, and the price will go down a little bit. But I need that in my library. So it's like a diary. And then Robertson finished his his piece by writing, incidentally, on July, excuse me, incidentally on Sunday, October 10th, 1958, Lincoln spent most of the afternoon writing a speech he was going to give later in Quincy, Illinois. So the guy that was going to write about what Lincoln did on Sundays, there's apparently some reference to that in this wonderful work. On October the 7th, 2008, in an issue of USA Today, there was an article entitled, quote, The Troubled Nation Looks to Lincoln, Historians Ponder Enduring Legacies, Lessons We Can Learn. Well, the writer was a guy named Gary Levin, and he was quoting a publisher of books, some of which were on Lincoln, and this publisher, Jonathan Crape, said, Lincoln is an evergreen. The interest is inexhaustible. Well, I wish I was making this presentation today in the library with a great Lincoln collection because I would treat all of you like fellow students and we would go into the stacks and, uh, and we'd start pulling books off and, and do it that way. In fact, I wish you were at my home in Ludington because I don't have a great Lincoln collection, but I have about 250 volumes. And uh, when I was a graduate student, I always loved it when a professor, would, regardless of the course, would help us understand what we ought to read. If I was taking a course on the age of Jackson, a great professor would tell me what is the best one or two biographies that have been written about Jackson because, and I know you're all teachers so you've got lots of knowledge, but when you're a graduate student you're just learning and you could easily read something that's not very good and we all have limited amount of time to read. And so I did my master's at Central Michigan University and their library is called the Park Library and, and when I say this you're all going to think I'm a terrible nerd but uh, when I took a break, when I took a break from studying and being in class, I went to the library because I loved the literature so much. And I would go into the stacks and just pull books off the shelves and read maybe the preface, introduction, or what it said in the dust jacket, and, uh, and just loved that experience. And I like it so much that in my own home now, I have created stacks. So when I want joy and I want break, I go to my space and go into my stacks and literally do the same thing. So you already heard what my purpose is and one, let's start uh, with talking about bibliography and uh, I've got to walk around a bit now because I want to give each of you some copies of bibliographies and the one that I've prepared first is a compilation of um, some of the really new books. And I started with books that were published in 2005 because I'm pretty sure they were getting ready for the bicentennial. Uh, and I don't mean to think that I've caught every single one, but I pay a lot of attention, so I, I bet I've got at least 95 percent. And uh, maybe one of you would help. Would one of you help me with a, a kind of a distributor for me and give everyone? I'm going to do this about three times. Thank you. 